So today, uh, this lecture is on biomes. Biomes are um, important, you know, uh, globally. I'm talking about different types of ecosystems, but they are generally described by the species of plant that is dominant there. So a biome is defined as a terrestrial biotic community. So then, this is the living things in the environment. Um, considered on a global or continental scale. So these are the biomes of the world. And this is kind of a general biome. They do get more specific than this, but um, we're gonna keep it simple for the purpose of, of this botany class. Most North American biomes we see on other continents. However, there are some biomes that are not on North America that are on other continents. And the major influencing factor in determining um, the establishment of one biome over another is the climate um, and so the weather patterns the long-term consistent weather patterns and things that affect climate will affect the establishment and persistence of different biomes all right so we're going to go through the different biomes <clears throat> and we'll start kind of more northern or southern in latitude or extreme in latitudes um, and then go towards the, towards the equator so the first one, um, the more northern and southern latitudes, <coughs> excuse me, is the tundra. And it occupies about one-fifth of Earth's land surface, or 20%, and is primarily above the Arctic Circle. And you don't really see this in the southern hemisphere because, um, except on mountaintops, because um, there's no land in that latitude. Uh, there's, there isn't a lot of land below the Antarctic Circle, other than Antarctica, and it's too cold there. Um, it is treeless. There are no real trees there. Um, and it is characterized by having a soil that is frozen for most, well, areas of the soil are frozen for the year, um, <clears throat> year round, but the top layers are going to be uh, thawing out in the summer months. So this permafrost then you can, it varies depending on location, but it's somewhere between 10 and one, 10 centimeters and one meter below the surface. And this holds the water, the, the frozen layer holds the water at or near the surface. So it's very dense, boggy, uh, kind of marshy area. You don't get a lot of rain in these areas, so it's less than 25 centimeters annually, generally very dry. And the growing season is short, only two to three months. Um, and that's because of the fluctuations in daylight and temperature. The high temperatures are about 27 degrees Celsius, and I think that's being a little generous. Normally, so 27 degrees is about um, 75, close to 80 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, it generally stays much cooler than that um, in the 50 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. In the winters, it can get down to negative 40 or colder if you take factor in <clears throat> the wind chill. This is a very fragile ecosystem, so it doesn't take much to disturb it. Um, the ecosystem as far as warming. And it is one of the ecosystems that is under uh, threat with global warming because this, if this permafrost melts, then the whole ecosystem will change. The taiga, also called the northern conifer or boreal forest, is just lower to the tundra in uh, latitude, and it's dominated by evergreen trees. You can see here these are a bunch of spruce trees. Um, and these trees are adapted to cold temperatures, uh, such as spruce, fir, and pine trees. Uh, they can grow on some levels of permafrost, you know, as long as it's not too close to the surface. And there are lots of perennials and shrubs and a few annuals, but because the growing season is so short, um, annuals aren't as persistent as other, as other types of plants. There is a lot of water, not because it rains a lot, again, only 25 to 100 centimeters a year, but because the water doesn't evaporate. So you get snow and it freezes and it doesn't evaporate for much of the year. 
and you have short summers and all that snow melts and accumulates in these ponds. <clears throat> um, and most precipitation occurs in the summer. Although there is a lot of snow, it just kind of blows around. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have most of its precipitation there. All right, next down from the boreal forest, we have temperate deciduous forests, and there are different types of these. Uh, but generally, they are deciduous broad-leaved forests, uh, species, okay, that shed their leaves in the autumn. Temperature ranges from 4 to 20 degrees Celsius, can dip below freezing as well. And the annual precipitation is kind of high, so 50 to 165 centimeters of rain, which mostly occurs in the summer months. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a variety of plants associated with the temperate deciduous forests, including uh, sugar maples and American bat basswood in Midwestern United States. In the Northeast, we have sugar maple, birch, oak, and American beech. West Central, we have mostly oaks and hickories. And the Southeastern, we have oak, hickory, pine, and some bald cypress. During the summer, the canopy is, as you can see here, um, overshadowed by the uh, leaves which have grown in on, on the trees so that not much sunlight gets at, in at the forest floor. But in the spring you do have some flowers which emerge before the, the buds have fully grown in their leaves because um, the canopy is open at that point. <coughs> Alright, mountain and coastal forests, so similar to deciduous, only this is dominated generally by gymnosperms. So these are found in the Pacific Northwest as well as portions of the Rocky Mountains and Sierra Nevadas. And they have high annual rainfall or other forms of condensation or precipitation. The world's tallest conifers, we've mentioned this before, are found in the coastal redwoods in California and the giant sequoias of um, Central California and Northeast, northwestern United States. Um, they are also found in low elevations on outer coastal ranges and they depend on fog for their um, hydration requirements. So you can also find them again in, in these mountain ranges in specific zones. So as you go up in, um, in elevation, it's similar to going up in, uh, in latitude. So at the tops of mountains, um, and it depends on where you are, where these mountains are, but <clears throat> you can have a desert scrub or, or desert um, grassland near the base of these mountains, and at the top you would have these mixed conifer uh, mountain forests. Um, <clears throat> and these mountain forests, are, again, like I said, are altitudinal zonation of species. You see them in different altitudinal um, zones. They have relatively dry summers and frequent forest fires. So you can see kind of this uh, forest fire scar in this giant uh, redwood tree here. And the fire adaptations, they have these very thick pipe, uh, bark, which is fire retardant for the most part. And they don't release their seeds, the cones don't, until after a fire. So they're dependent on the fire to perpetuate areas which are open. As those seedlings will not um, emerge until after a fire occurs. All right, grasslands then are found um, again more lower in latitude in the interior of continental masses and their annual precipitation is not super high but 25 to 100 centimeters a year. Temperatures range from negative 45 to degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius above. So quite a vast range of temperatures. <coughs> They're very fertile soils, so they have lots of grasses which grow there and high, um, generally um, tall grasses. And uh, historically they supported large herds of buffalo, but now we use them for our cows. The desert is characterized by having very low precipitation, less than 12 and a half centimeters um, per year and very low humidity has wide daily temperature ranges, so it's very hot in the daytime, and that can have a 20 degree shift in um, from day to night. Some plants exhibit cam photosynthesis, including these cacti, um, which generally have cam photosynthesis. 
Other adaptations for resistance against desiccation include thick cuticles, water storage, and different parts of the plant. Um, leathery leaves, uh, stem photosynthesis when leaves are absent, and water also being stored in the stems. All right. Um, it's got a little way, but um, sorry, these are out of order. Other grasslands uh, characteristics um, with the Mediter Mediterranean uh, climate, including the Central Valley of California. They have precipitation mostly in winter, and grasses don't grow as tall as those of the Midwestern prairies. So these are short-term grasslands, or short um, grasslands. They usually have these vernal pools, which are temporary pools, which uh, eventually dry up as the growing season um, progresses. But they have a unique floral pattern, so as you get further and further out from the vernal pool, you have different types of flowers which will occur in those areas. All right, the tropical rainforest. 5% of the Earth's surface is the tropical rainforest, but it contains a significant amount of the biomass has very high annual precipitation, 200 to 400 centimeters. Temperatures range between 25 and 35 degrees Celsius and generally do not fluctuate that much because they are on the equator. Generally no dry season and the humidity is usually very high. So this is hot, humid, wet area. The floral and fauna species exceeds those of all other biomes, so it's very biodiverse. And it's dominated by broad-leaved evergreen trees with tall unbranched trunks greater than 40 meters tall. Um, they don't generally shed their leaves because they are <clears throat> they don't have a seasonal variation in the rain or light. They have shallow root systems. The soil is not very deep or thick and is usually nutrient poor. Um, and so they have extensive root types, including buttresses, which help to firm them down into the soil. Um, there's usually a dense multi-layered canopy, so things on the forest floor, things growing on trees, vines, epiphytes, and then trees which extend up into the canopy. And uh, epiphytes um, are plants that can grow on top of other plants, essentially, um, being uh, sustained just by rainwater. There's little accumulation of litter or hummus on the ground. It is usually uh, decomposes very quickly and organisms take advantage of those. Um, and are or leached by heavy rainfalls, which so it's constantly raining, so it's constantly taking debris and, away from the soil. All right, savannas are kind of like grasslands. They occupy probably 20% of the Earth's land area, so a lot. The largest ones are found in Africa, um, but there's also some found in Australia, India, and South America. They have some isolated trees and shrubs, uh, which make them kind of different than the grasslands, which are just mainly going to be grass. They have limited rainfall, and that prevents the establishment of dense trees. And the temperature ranges from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Generally, they are closer close to the equator. Um, all right, chaparral is not very extensive biome, but it is um, geographically important. It's found in California, the Baja California Peninsula of Mexico, also found in Mediterranean areas. It's characterized by a shrubland, so you have lots of these shrubs and infrequent fire regime. Temperatures range from just below freezing to very hot in the summertime and the rainfall is not very much either so it's similar to a desert maybe a little more, more rainfall and um, a little bit uh, more uh, less kind of the cactus species more of these bushy and um, small tree species all right the chaparral has uh, generally, the shrubs there have woody stems, but don't have a dominant trunk. <clears throat> and they are characterized by having a extensive root system. So here are some of the grasses which grow. Um, and you can see they have very, very extensive root systems to capture as much water as possible. Um, and also helps them to replenish after a fire. 
We have cool, moist winters and hot, dry summers. Fire is important. Some seeds don't germinate, similar to the, the pine forests, until after a fire. Shrubs are evergreen, so they uh, include buckwheat um, and yucca, scrub, oaks, and sumac. So these are small, bush-like plants. 